also got to be strong in this industry, as in any other industry. So good morning. We are on site Monday the 6th, Labor Day. I have a 8 a.m. delivery time, Central. It is now 741, and that little gate right there, and that little white guard shack that's where I'm supposed to be delivering I see one car out there uh, so good chance I'm not getting unloaded today which I knew was a 50-50 shot being a holiday uh, so I gotta sit here I have to at least check in be here for X amount of time that the broker deems necessary before they decide it's just going to be a layover and then uh, they'll shoot me out a new Raycon with the uh, layover added on and uh, yeah if this place doesn't open uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to go to the state park or am I going to grab a room thinking more I want to grab a room supposed to be over 100 degrees today and that'll have that air conditioner and running pretty much overtime in this heat <clears throat> so we'll figure that out later but yeah that's what ha this this is what happens so for any of you that aren't familiar when you get to a shipper or a receiver and they end up not being open and you have to wait until the following day to um, stop mid-sentence because I see somebody else pulling in the parking lot. Maybe they're going to open today. Who knows? Uh, around here, you never know what the uh, with the delivery times as far as when they open. But yeah, real quick, back to it. <clears throat> then I'll get back to that. So if you get here and you end up having a layover, as I said, you should be getting layover pay. Because normally... Like, like, there's detention, and then there's layover. Detention is usually an hourly rate, and, you know, say you're stuck for X amount of hours, then they're going to pay you detention. Then there's layover, where you get there, and then they just decide right off the bat, hey, are you willing to lay over? And then if you say yes, then you get a flat fee for laying over, which could range, who knows? It, it, it can range, uh, I've seen it as much as 200 bucks. I've seen it as little as 75 bucks. So, uh... <clears throat> the layover rate could change now there is the occasion that if you sat there you know messing around trying to figure it out for say multiple hours say five six hours past your pickup or delivery time then you might get some detention on top of the layover that's happened that's been extremely rare but it has happened so that's how it works concerning getting to a place and having to hold it overnight because essentially now now the options are first like if you get to a place say you're delivering like me i'm delivering say i'm set for this i can be adamant like hey i gotta have this off of my van i've got another load book i've got to get this off i cannot lay it over I'm gonna have to find a cross dock and then we're gonna have to go to a cross dock get it unloaded and you know then you should you know you probably get paid for another you know, taking it to another location because per the contract, you know, once you've gotten to a certain point and you get you 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 give them basically like a two hour grace period of picking up and dropping off. So after that two hours, like I said, and you're supposed to be dropped, that's all on you. You are the one in control at that point. Doesn't feel that way when you're working with brokers and your dispatch, but you are in control. Like you've lived up to your end of the your obligation of that contract. <clears throat> so now some of these people which will have some fine print uh, you know maybe they'll have something in there that, that protects their ass from something like that I haven't seen it yet but it's possible uh, but anyhow yes you are contr in control of what goes on but typically people usually lay over with it but sometimes you may have a load booked or whatnot, and you have to get it off so it's going to go to a cross dock that's your solution to if you're delivering now on the pickup you can either lay over or you can say hey I want taken off of this load 
I just touched on it a second ago about about some of the fine print and it brings me to some of the brokers uh, some of the stuff that they do that's kind of funny uh, you know I'm attached to the emails for dispatch so I see the email conversations that are going on with my brother at dispatch and it's I find it funny some of these brokers they're like super freaking nice to you when you're trying to negotiate the load and shit you know because they're trying to lowball your ass and and whatnot and then once you get the load because the perfect example is the load the load i'm speaking of like i seen the conversation going back and forth they're super civil and everything well i don't know if they have like templates different templates on these emails they use because and again when you're reading text the meaning and how it's being presented can be lost in translation. So, uh, I want to preface it with that. But after he got the load and everything, and then he's, then the driver picks up and all that good stuff, well, on his way to the pickup. Then the next email is basically acknowledging that the driver's en route. And then there's, uh, then there's, uh, driver must be properly properly dressed or there could be a rate deduction per contract or whatever it's they always they're, they're, there's just certain brokers that slip that stuff in there afterwards that, that you know like they they just sound like they're being complete assholes now again I'd like to have a conversation with the broker and more than likely they've probably had some incidents that people have called in and complained or or they know somebody that's had issues with uh uh, shippers or receivers calling in and complaining about the way the dri drivers are dressed because there are a lot of drivers out here that are walking into the office open-toed shoes you know flip-flop sandals uh tank tops and and just some places don't want that some places are most places are pretty relaxed they're usually not going to say nothing about how you're dressed you can be tank top whatever you know flip-flops whatever uh it, it just looks unprofessional when it's all together you know, so uh, I get why they put some of those things on there, but it's just it's just the way it comes across. Uh, you know, that's like myself. You know, I had a had an issue with the broker. You know, just the way they came across, like, like they, I, I just grind my teeth at it because the brokers know that they've got you by the balls overall like yes there's a shit ton of brokers out there there's not very there's not a lot of good ones uh and fair ones but there's a lot out there so yeah you can tell whatever broker pisses you off to f off and move on to the next one uh but obviously as all of you know pretty much most of you know there ain't very many of you out there that hasn't been you know put in a position that you want the load you need the load whatever it may be and you're tolerating things that you wouldn't normally want to tolerate in order to get that load and that's what goes on i mean especially when you're you know as a dispatch unless you're just an a-hole and you don't care about your drivers like you're concerned about getting your drivers loads and that's some of the stuff that dispatchers have to deal with from these brokers and that's not to say brokers don't deal with shit either like like i get it i'm not i'm not trying to just knock on brokers it's just i'm highlighting the a-hole ones they just there's just some real slimy ones like there's there's this one broker uh used them twice and put in a certain bid they agreed to the bid you get the rate con and they and it's five dollars less it's like five dollars really like like two different times they're trying to take five dollars and it was the same broker. Obviously, don't don't even mess with that broker no more now. But yeah, it's just it, it's it's grimy stuff like that. And then you and you have to. This is one thing for sure for any of you that are starting to do it on your own. Be sure you get your rate con and you read it carefully before you sign it and send it back. If you don't have to send it back right away. Uh, depending on the broker, you might also want to hold off signing it until the load is completed. Because uh, some of these brokers, 
It's very few. It's very few that'll be this grimy, but they and, and I we haven't had it happen with us personally. So I can't say I can't even say from experience it has happened. I guess it's the possibility that it could happen. If you sign it, send it in, and then you have an issue with the load and you you try to say, Hey, you know, we want compensated for this. And they're like, Well, you know, we've got a sign rate con. You know, we're not you know, we're not gonna take care of that. Or they can just blow you off and Say, hey, you know, the customer won't pay. They've already got a signed con, you know, rate con with you. So uh, sometimes, depending on the broker, if you're uncomfortable with the broker, you might want to hold off on, you know, signing it and sending it back in and whatnot. I've been guilty of not reading the rate con information thorough enough at times. Now, it's never burned me. I've always been able to deal with and, and, and take care of whatever little thing I missed uh, for instance like the other day I did miss that the delivery date was supposed to be on the 5th the one I picked up on the 3rd it was supposed to be the 5th so just just my experience led me to believe that I could be able to get it off if I got there soon enough on the 3rd because it was a short run and that's why I overlooked it is because it was a short run picking up first thing in the morning and I agreed to take it because I didn't pay attention to the delivery date like I said I just assumed and you know what assume is but I just I that that's that's an instant where I should have that's an instance where I should have taken my time gotten all the information clear like I get I get so freaking load and money you know hungry grubby whatever you want to call it that i'm just like i see a load picking up near me and i know it fits and it's like boom i want to grab it i have i'm trying to control myself as far as slow it down ask more information you know ask when you know when it delivers the exact dimensions all of those things so i'm trying to get better about that moral of the story is read the rate con or when you're bidding on a load make sure you're getting all the dimensions of the stuff and bid on it and you know know exactly what you're getting into well, I think this guy's supposed to be delivering here today too oh, there goes another van where's he going where's he coming from how do you get a load? Uh, but yeah, that's uh, I don't know if all these vans come here too. I'm getting all interrupted because I'm getting distracted, man. Squirrel, squirrel. Hello. I might have to back up or pull up a little bit more. No, I think I have to back up starting to get this sun in my eyes anywho know all your information before you accept a load and if you're actually dispatching loads or bidding your own loads be sure that you're looking at all the information look at the dims look for any fine print uh, you know there's sometimes on the load board when these loads are on the board there's notes so you need to go into the notes not just go off of just the just what's right there on the board itself you got to tap into the load get the load information to verify dims a lot of times these places don't even have the dims listed they might have the pieces they might have the weight sometimes they don't have none of that uh-oh we got a security guard uh-oh we got life uh-oh hold on i'm gonna go check this out So, good news. They're supposed to open. She said about 9, 9.30. But anywho, I'm going to wait for them to open. I think I'm going to clean up the van a little bit up front here. Wipe down a few things. Uh, rain, rearrange a little bit. Get a little bit organized. Now, the thing is, I'm not sure what I'm going to do when I unload. 
because there's a lot of vans at the truck stops. There probably isn't much going on today because it's the holiday. Uh, man. So I don't know. Don't know if I want to move up out of here. Man. Really not sure what I want to do, what would be the best call. Because, I mean, no matter, like, if I move out of here, I mean, my choices are pretty slim. It's, I mean, the two main choices is going to be Dallas or Houston. Uh, Houston's a little bit closer, I believe. Hmm. Or, do I stay here and just hope that I get lucky on one? Not sure, man. I'm not sure. I got decisions to make. So, in the meantime, while I'm making these decisions and cleaning my van up, I am getting off of here. So you guys have a great Labor Day. Yes, it is. Lights is playing back. Or yes, in the back. What a way to celebrate Labor Day, ain't it? Hey, well, I guess you can look at it two ways. Like it sucks you're not at home, but at the same time, we're making money, right? Yeah, we need both. Yes, we yes. Need to stay home and get money. Right, right. If you can figure that out, let me know. <laughs> I know. Name and uh, driver license. All right. Oh, so you just need the number on there? The driver's license number? Yeah. Usually, but, oh, just between you and I, you don't have to write the whole number. Just put part of it and put a night and put it like it's your ID number. Okay. Why make it so I'm, I know mine pretty easily, so. Uh -huh. There you okay. go. All right, you're going to give that to her. Oh, okay. You're going to park right here in dock number one. Go straight out. Okay. And then go up the ramp. On the glass door, go to the second window. Okay. You do have a vest. Yes. Please. No problem. Mask. Okay. All right, thank you. You're welcome. I'll see you on the way out. Yes, ma'am. goes easy peasy man let's go get this van washed I was gonna stop and look for you I was gonna wait for you I wasn't taking off no I know you were. <laughs> You have a wonderful day. Likewise, take care. I hope you're going home. No, 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 I'm a long way from home. I'm trying to decide whether I'm gonna go to the uh, campground if they're open or just get a hotel for the night and wait for freight tomorrow. I live in Ohio. 
Yeah. No home today. You take care. Thank you. You too.